in the last stream. We were working on finalizing our automation for steel casing. To do that, we had to set up the Well of Suffering down here beneath our pre-existing Blood Altar, and we had to set up a new mob farm right at the bottom of that Well of Suffering to allow us to provide infinite mobs to our Well of Suffering, which eventually will turn into just infinite witches. And also, apparently, we have a missing torch over here. Let me quickly do one of those. And what I want to work on now, now that we have steel casing basically fully automated, is I want to work on pushing forward to get a few more bees. Because I think at this point in time, we are in a position to start focusing on the end game of this mod pack. The end game of this pack requires a lot of ultimate singularities, and it also requires a lot of ultimate ingots. We'll get to both of those at some point in the not so distant future, but essentially, both of these here are going to require a lot of resources from a lot of different bees. And right now, I think there are only a handful of bees that we can't actually produce. And so I want to work on trying to produce those bees so that we can then spend a bunch of time getting all the bees required and setting them up in tier four apiaries to get all of the resources that we need for all of the singularities and all of the ultimate ingots. Now, the bees I have in mind are specifically the Terra Steel Bee from Batania. That's this one right here. The Draconic Bee from Draconic Evolution and the Awakened Draconian Bee, which kind of comes after that uh, Draconian Bee as well. And the Draconian Bee requires the Terra Steel Bee. The Terra Steel Bee here, I believe, also requires a Mana Steel Bee. I think this is one of those that we have to get via the Spawn Egg. It does indeed. And then the Mana Steel Bee, I think, is also another Spawn Egg situation where we need the Mana Steel Bee Spawn Egg. And this just is an IMB over a Mana Pool. This bit here is easy enough. And honestly, all of the breeding isn't really the tricky part of getting those bees. The trickiest part, I think, of all of this is going to be getting the Terra Steel Bee Nectar Block because in order to get the Terra Steel Bee Nectar Block, we need two blocks of Terra Steel. Terra Steel is a powerful resource from Batania that is made using this terrestrial agglomeration plate setup and it requires half a mana pool full of mana per Terra Steel. Between streams, I have gone ahead and uh, thrown down a few blocks of coal on our end of flames to get more mana. And real quick, one of the first things I am gonna do at the start of today's stream is I'm gonna get a few more blocks of coal and throw those down again because we're going to need a ton of mana today. Specifically, if we are going to get the Terra Steel B Nectar block, we need 18 Terra Steel, AKA two blocks worth. And that means that we're going to need nine full mana pools worth of mana. Now, it's not my intention to get those nine full mana pools worth of mana just by throwing an endless amount of coal onto these end of flames. We could do that but where is the fun in that? Instead, I think we should set up different flowers from Britannia that are hopefully going to allow us to generate more mana in hopefully a more interesting way. However, before we get started with that, there are a few tweaks that I've made to the base since the end of the last stream. The first of which is that I have finally gone ahead and moved our molecular assemblers over to here. And I've also moved these ME interfaces and I've made more molecular assemblers as well to accommodate for these ME interfaces. Previously, we had multiple around one molecular assembler. Now we have one ME interface to one molecular assembler. And I've also moved our crafting CPU over here as well. And I think basically the first thing that I'd like to do here actually is probably look at making a few more crafting CPUs because as I mentioned in the last episode, we currently can't do more than one auto craft at a time because we only have the one crafting CPU. And so real quick, what we can probably do over here is we can potentially look at teaching our system how to make the crafting CPU components. Specifically, I think I wanna teach my system how to make the 1K component in code and potentially the 16K component as well. I think if I'm not mistaken, our system does already know how to make the uh, 16K component. Never mind, I really thought we hooked that up, although I might have, uh, mess up the cabling a little bit. Alternatively, I might have actually put the patterns back into the system, but that is completely fine. Back over here, do we have any patterns lying around? We do, there we go. I knew we encoded these patterns. Let me take all of these out and let me go and put them all back into any one of these ME interfaces. Boom, boom, and boom, perfect. And so now let me see if I can't request, for example, another 1K crafting storage. We can, we're just missing a crafting unit. Again, teaching that should be fairly straightforward in code. And between streams, I did do a little bit more processor work to where we should have some calculation processes over here for specifically this craft right here. So if we go ahead and throw these into our system 
and we put this pattern into any one of these MB interfaces, we should now be able to request, hopefully, at least one of these 1K crafting storage CPUs. We can indeed. And my idea here is that I'm kind of going to duplicate the setup that we already have a couple of times. As you can see by this little layout that I've done here, my plan is to put a 1K CPU here, turning this effectively into a 18K CPU, 16K here plus two 1Ks, 18K in total. And then we're going to do that multiple times. I'm going to make two, three, four of those so that we have multiple different crafting CPUs that are all available if we need to do multiple different crafts all at once. Basically, we're going to do something like this. Boom. And then we're going to duplicate that, let's say three more times. And not too long later, boom, boom, and boom, we now have four CPUs. And under here, I have begun to run some dense cabling under here as well, just to make life a little easier on the channel front. We do have three more dense cables here that we can go ahead and if we uh, hit G, we can turn hover mode on real quick. We can do something like this. Uh, whoops, I did not mean to put that there. I meant to have that one further over. Uh, although we should, I think, be at a point where we can probably request three more dense cable just to get all of that connected and keep us within the channel limits. And a quick request later, one, two, and three. Cool, all right. Other things that I've done between streams, so I think maybe the one other thing that I've done between the stream is I've gone ahead and actually moved the automatic wither killer that we set up in a previous stream. I've gone and placed it into another compact machine, so just a copy of the large compact machine that we already had, and the setup in here is basically exactly the same. We have our mob crusher right here with the same tier four range add-on. It is being powered by the flux point. I have, of course, gone ahead and chunk loaded this compact machine to make sure that this is always online. This is also getting power as well via our flux network. And essentially, the only thing that we have to change here is we do have to get the wither skeleton skulls and the soul sand across dimensions. So we have to teleport them into here. I think for that, the easiest way for us to do it is going to be using ender chests, much in the same way that we used ender tanks for getting the ether gas out of this compact machine. I think using ender chests, again, not the vanilla Minecraft ender chests. These are the ender storage ender chests. I think these are gonna make life so much easier. The reason you can't use the vanilla Minecraft, by the way, is that you can't uh, hop it into or hop it out of these chests where you can do that with the ender storage versions. These are pretty straightforward to make. And I'm actually gonna make a couple of these here. The reason for that is I do want to have these on different channels in kind of the same way that we did with our ender tanks. So real quick, let me throw all six of these down. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click these diamonds onto here as well. Again, just like with the ender tanks, this is going to lock these to me. You'll see already just by putting that on, it's uh, kind of created two different networks despite the fact that the frequency on these are the same. Uh, but once they're all set to me and nobody else, we can then go ahead and pick our frequency. For us, we have a lot of green dye and the green dye we have, but I think it's gonna make more sense if we kind of color coordinate this. So I'm gonna use some black dye for the Wither Skeleton Skulls. And of course now we do have a ton of RGB honeycomb so we can make really any dye that we like fairly easily. And so let's go and do black, 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 black. So now these are gonna be used to send Wither Skeleton Skulls through into the compact machine. We'll then get maybe like a brown dye for the soul sand, and we'll put that on the next two ender chests. So the exact same thing here. We're gonna go brown, 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 brown. And then the nether stars are the final piece of the puzzle. I think what we'll do for those is we'll maybe get some yellow dye, but I think what I might do is I might do potentially white, yellow, white, like this. And these are our nether star frequencies. And so essentially here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take two, actually, I'll pick all these up, but essentially what we're gonna do is we're gonna have three of these ender chests inside of the compact machine and three of them outside of the compact machine. The idea being that if we quickly grab an item pipe as well as a wrench, which we actually have in our inventory, what we should be able to do is in here, we should be able to place down our brown ender chest like this, along with our black ender chest like this. This ender chest is gonna receive wither skeleton skulls up on the surface or outside of the compact machine. It's gonna extract them and pump them into the wither builder. Over on this side, we're gonna do the exact same thing, but this is gonna get soul sand and we're gonna pump that in as well. You could try and do this with one ender chest. That could work, but I think it's just more of a convoluted setup that's not worth the hassle, especially given how cheap it is to make these ender chests. And then the final piece of the puzzle is gonna be the nether stars that come out of this whole system. And those are gonna get pumped around into this ender chest right here. And in fact, we can use the crusher here to just auto push into that chest like so. 
Cool. And that's going to push basically anything that is produced here into that chest. And then we're going to import that into our applied logistics to system. And so now back in the overworld, what we can do is potentially over here, we can get rid of this modular router. This is no longer required for any of this. We'll take all this out and we'll throw that uh, bow out into the abyss and uh, we'll go ahead and pick this up. And I think basically what we'll do is we'll just throw down uh, these three, oh, a little bit of server like there. And we'll throw down these three ender chests, let's say here, here, and here. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our export cable here, ideally, and we're gonna put that down on the brown chest right here. We also do wanna get another export cable to put on the wither skeleton chest. And then finally, we also want to get an import bus as well that we can then use to import from the nether star chest. I don't think any of these should be too difficult for us. We're just missing one piston. I think at this point in time, we've got 3000 iron, we've got 70,000 redstone, we've got essentially unlimited wood and we've got, uh, I believe unlimited cobblestone as well. I think we can safely make a stack of uh, pistons again so that we don't have to keep micro crafting those going forward. And then the annihilation core, super easy. At that point, we should have basically everything for the import bus as well. That should be perfectly fine. And so now back over here, we can do an exporter here and we can do an importer here. And then assuming we have enough channels, which I think we do, we should be able to then connect all of these up to our system. You'll know you have enough channels if these turn a dark blue. They start out pink, but then if they turn dark blue like this, it means they are connected to the network. If they stay pink, it means you don't have enough channels to connect this up and you need to kind of change your, your network wiring on the underside of the base. We'll also go ahead and get rid of these. I'm not too bothered about picking these up. We do have a uh, staggering number of Wither Skeleton Skulls and Soul Sand now because it is coming in automatically, although it probably would have been somewhat sensible, Isaac, if you had at least gotten one piece of soul sand so you didn't have to fly back and, uh, and grab some out of the system. Either way, all we should have to do now is tell this guy here to export soul sand, this guy here to export wither skeleton skulls, and then this guy here we're gonna leave empty because he is gonna import anything that is produced here. And so now we should see all of these being exported, we do. And if we head on over into our compact machine, we should hopefully see those items getting pumped into the wither builder, we do. Then we can go ahead and turn off this lever, which is currently stopping the wither builder from working. And now it's gonna continually place down withers. We are still safe from the uh, the blast because of the wither proof glass. And so hopefully the wither here should just continue to be spawned, continue to get killed by the mob crusher, and then continue to produce nether stars basically forever until we come in and stop it. Cool. With the added benefit now of us not having to deal with the explosions or the sound or the damage to our bees, with it being in the overworld. So now that's taken care of, let's pivot back over to this Batania work that needs to be done. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how we're gonna generate our mana. There's a couple of different mana generation options from Batania. If you get the uh, Lexica Batania out, which I actually thought we had, but I guess we don't, that's fine. If we craft up a Lexica Batania, which you can do by crafting any regular Minecraft book along with any regular flower, you can then get the guide. And the generating flower is the page that you're after. And by default here, we've got quite a few different flowers we can choose from. There are more that you unlock as you progress further on into Batania. The end of flame is the one we already have. This produces mana when you give it fuel. The hydrangeas here produce mana from water, but they're quite slow. The Andropinium is a flower that I don't know if I've used before, but I think it's the one we're going to use today because it's pretty nifty. We'll come back to it. The Gormorillus here is a flower that eats food, so you give it food and then it will produce mana. The Munchdew eats leaves, which is pretty nifty. Uh, the Rose Arcana here uses experience. The Thermolily uses lava. And the Narslimus, I believe, uh, generates mana if you place it into uh, slime chunks. But we are gonna go with the Entropinium because this generates mana by absorbing explosions. You'll see here, to generate a blast of mana, in fact, a blast might be required. Igniting a block of TNT on dry land near the entropinium will have the latter absorb the entropy generated by the blast, converting it into mana. So you put down TNT, you turn the lever, it blows up, but instead of doing any damage, the entropinium here will absorb all of the explosive power of that TNT and use it to produce mana. There is only one catch though, it will only negate a TNT explosion if it has no mana inside of it. So you have to kind of put down TNT, blow it up, it's gonna produce a ton of mana. Then you have to get all that mana out of the flower as fast as possible using mana spreaders and potentially their associated upgrades. And then once the flower is empty, you can then put down another TNT and set it off again to repeat the process all over again. And so to make this, we do need to get a rune of fire and a rune of wrath. The rune of fire shouldn't be too bad. And I think the rune of wrath 
isn't too bad either. This requires two mana diamonds, one rune of earth, and one rune of winter, uh, which we'll come to in a second. And then we also need the rune of fire, this guy right here. So uh, this is, of course, made using our runic altar. I say, of course, although I think so far what we've made on the runic altar is the mana infused coal that we use to make our starlight infusion altar. But basically, all we have to do is acquire these items right here. In this case, we need to get a nether brick, which we do have, perfect. We also need to get a nether wart, which we also have in abundance, good stuff. We also need a gunpowder. We've got that in abundance as well, fantastic. Along with one mana powder and one mana steel. So one mana steel is just one iron ingot dropped into the mana pool. And then one mana powder is either redstone, glowstone, or gunpowder dropped in the mana pool. You can use any one of those three. They will all produce the uh, the same mana powder. In fact, if I show you right here, you've got redstone dust. Actually, any dye works apparently as the sugar, gunpowder, and glowstone. Cool. And once you have all the uh, required items, we can just do, uh, oh, of course, that didn't work for us because of the fact that we have our catalyst underneath here. Uh, and you'll see the catalyst just transformed the glowstone into redstone and, and vice versa, which is not, Actually, what we want to do instead, what we want to do is uh, quickly undo that by picking up our alchemy catalyst here. We can put this back down later if we need it again, for example, for gas tiers. But for now, I actually do want to turn our glowstone into mana powder. Fantastic. And then over here, we can add that along with the mana steel ingot and along with all of our other items. And once we've got all the items on, just like before with the block of infused coal, it's going to start to fill up the progress bar on the right hand side there and once it's full we have to drop a living rock onto the runic altar and right click with the wand of the forest boom and boom cool and now we basically have to do the exact same thing here for the rune of earth and the rune of winter these are both made in fairly similar ways the rune of earth is again the mana powder and mana ingot these are both required for basically every one of the basic runes. On top of that, we need stone of any kind, uh, coal, and a mushroom. Do we have any mushrooms? That is a good question. We do not have any mushrooms. The second question is, can we generate the mushrooms using Batania? We totally can. We can turn a poppy into a mushroom. I think we might have done that previously in the series. That's completely fine. And uh, the rune of winter here requires a rune of water, a rune of earth, a snow block times two, a block of wool, and a cake. This is where things get a little bit tricky here so the rune of water and the rune of earth again not too difficult the rune of water here uh, again the same thing this time with a fishing rod we'll make one of those along with a sugar cane and a bone meal all of that stuff we already have we should clear our inventory a little bit here because it's full of stuff we don't necessarily need to be carrying around with us the cake here is going to require the wheat the milk the sugar and the egg so we do have an egg Quite a few of them, actually. We've got a ton of sugar. We've got quite a bit of wheat. We can make more wheat with the seeds, of course. We just need milk. For milk, we're going to need some kind of cow. And although I don't see a cow around the base, we do have, I think, quite a few of them over in the nether that we could potentially hijack to the point where it's probably worth grabbing a mob imprisonment tool real quick. This is from Industrial Foregoing. I had a sneaking suspicion we weren't going to have enough uh, plastic to make that work. Do we have anywhere near enough tiny dry rubber to make this work actually real quick i'm being told that the ender farmer's lead here might actually be useful for us it's a lead an ender pearl and a gold ingot can i use that to kind of grab an animal from the nether that's essentially by the way what the mob imprisonment device does it lets you pick up any kind of mob that's not a boss mob uh, inside of essentially like a pokeball and then bring it back with you wherever you want it can i use this to grab like a pig I can't right click with it. I can left click with it though. Interesting. And then can I left click again? And I can right click. Interesting. So it does kind of work like a, a mob imprisonment tool. That's pretty nifty. The only downside is that we seemingly have no cows, which is very unfortunate. Thankfully, we should be able to get cows fairly easily back in the overworld. We have kind of two options here. We could set up a grass platform somewhere and just kind of hope that they spawn in. Although to be fair, that hasn't really worked out too well for us thus far alternatively we can actually make cow seeds and these don't actually look too difficult for us to make we are going to need more wheat but we need the more wheat for the cake anyway so real quick let's do something uh, actually i forgot we already have like a little wheat up over here that's perfect let's go ahead and alter mine all of this and as soon as we have a little bit more wheat we should then be able to get the cow seed and the cow seed here kind of as the name suggests is 
somewhat bizarrely going to allow us to grow a cow. So real quick, if I put this down, let's say right about here, we should then be able to sprint to make this grow faster. And as soon as it's fully grown, if we go ahead and alter mine, we get a cow. Cool. And we could, of course, go ahead and uh, take this cow with us and place him down wherever we so wish. I think for our purposes here, it is going to make a tremendous amount of sense for us to try and keep him somewhat captive inside of a little fenced off area. You know what? I'm going to put it down just right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boom. And then we'll just go and do this. Perfect. And then from there, we can just feed this guy a staggering amount of wheat. All right. So once we have our fully grown cow, let's get to three buckets of milk and the good news here is that due to the way that runes are made using the runic altar we should just require the one cake actually to make as many of the entropinium flowers as we like the reason for that is that whenever you do a craft like this whenever you try and make a rune the runes that you use to craft the rune don't get used so you'll notice that when we made the rune of fire it used all the items and it made us the rune of fire it took all the items away however when we go to make the rune of wrath we will put all of these items on, but we'll get all of the runes back. So it will take the two mana diamonds, but it will actually give us the rune of earth and the rune of winter back. And so we can keep reusing that rune of winter again and again and again to get as many runes of wrath as we like. And then we can use those runes of wrath to make the entropinions. That's the idea at least. So let's see if we can't make the rune of winter. For that, of course, the rune of earth and rune of water is required. Do we have the poppy required for that? We do indeed. Let me grab just a bunch of iron ingots so we can make a decent number of mana steel ingots we'll also do the same with redstone so we can make a bunch of mana powder so we'd have to keep coming back for that over and over again i know that we need sugar cane for the rune of water i also know we need bone meal for the rune of water as well we need some kind of stone for the rune of earth we also need a block of coal for the rune of earth as well along with the mushroom that we've got the poppy for that's everything there uh, that i believe is also everything there it is indeed and then as for the rune of winter this is where it gets a little tricky i guess we do need to get uh, some wool which we can do with string although in fact we did set up a wall b so we do have uh, 8000 wall already in the system however we do also need snow that is going to be a little tricky but actually not too bad thankfully one thing you can do is you can utilize the pure daisy to produce snow specifically i believe let me check jai real quick here to make sure i'm correct here but i believe we can turn water into snow using the pure daisy we can indeed now the tricky part is doing that without like losing the pure daisy because of course if you put water down next to the pure daisy it will just break the pure daisy so what you have to do is place the pure daisy down and then kind of set up areas at the corner where the water can actually go so uh, of course the pure daisy only works in the one block area around it so this is not right at all we want this to be here here and here and we want this to be here and here this is not a permanent fixture by any stretch of the imagination but these blocks of water here should get transformed into blocks of snow which we can then uh, harvest with a shovel and then craft those snowballs back up into blocks of snow which will hopefully then be everything that we need for the rune of winter while we wait for these to transform i think two should be enough i'll put a third one down just to be safe let's come back over here and let's quickly whip up the rune of water and the rune of earth And once we have both of those runes back over here, this is good to go. Let me quickly grab a shovel so we can actually acquire the snowballs from that snow. And then I'm hopeful that it should just be a case of, uh, of crafting that back up. Let's do one, two, and three. Perfect. And then if we were to do something like this, we could then put two of these snowballs onto here along with our cake, our rune of earth, our rune of water, and then the final piece of the puzzle here was, of course, the wall. Boom. And now, I believe that what we should see here is as soon as this is done, we once again, we're going to drop on a living rock, right-click it with the wand of the forest, but we should get the rune of water and the rune of earth bank along with a rune of winter. And then we're going to use the same mechanic to get us the runes of rain. We're going to get the rune of winter and the rune of earth bank. Over and over again, we just have to hand in at mana diamonds and i think that should be fairly easy for us to do we've got a ton of diamonds over seventy thousand of them in the system here and essentially each one of the entropiniums that we're going to make here requires uh, one rune of wrath 
So mm -hmm. let's say I wanted to make eight of these. I'm not actually quite sure how many of these we're going to put down yet, but let's say we want to do eight. That means I would need 16 mana diamonds, which is surprisingly doable. We can just take all 16 of them, drop them straight into the pool, and boom, we got 16 mana diamonds. Nice. Let's use a, a sizable chunk of mana, but uh, over here, let's do this and this, and you'll see that we got all of those runes back, which is perfect. So now we can do the same thing with the rune of winter, along with the rune of earth, I believe it was. Yes, and two, whoops, just one rune of earth. Shift right click, by the way, to get items back off. And then two mana diamonds, boom, boom. Cool. And so I'm gonna do that seven more times after this until we have uh, eight of these runes of wrath. And then for that to work, if I did want to make eight entropiniums, I'd also need to get eight runes of fire as well. So I would have to do this recipe a few more times as well, but none of that should be too difficult. And then of course, all of these petals are super easy for us to get. We can just plant them down, uh, run, share them, craft them, and repeat the process to get really an infinite amount of these and so yeah it really shouldn't be too difficult for us to get uh, a couple of these entropiniums crafted the tricky bit is going to be automating them to produce mana and not too long later we now have eight runes of wrath we've also got eight runes of fire and we've got a bunch of red white and gray petals so now over in our petal apothecary we should be able to drop two of each petal in along with one rune of wrath and one rune of fire and it's basically the same as when we made the endo flames, all you have to do is uh, make sure there's water in there, drop in a seed, and you get the entropinium. Nice. We can then repeat that process, of course. If we get a bucket of water, we can do this, this, then we can just double right click and drop in the seed, and boom, we get the flower. Cool. And so if we do that six more times, we should have eight entropiniums. And there we go, we have eight flowers. Now, one more thing I do want to do before we set this up is I do want to actually look at making these into floating entropinium flowers. This is nifty because it means we don't have to plant the flower down on dirt or grass because I think I'm actually going to set this up all the way over in one of these kind of back sections of the base and I don't really want to have to plant grass or dirt down there it also allows us to, to kind of stack these as well which is going to be fairly useful so to do that we have to make a floating flower of some persuasion this is pretty straightforward it's one dirt one pasture seed and then one glimmering version of a mystical flower the pasture seed, super easy. We've seen it before. We just take some grass, of which we now have 24,000, and we drop it over into our mana pool. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. And then back over here, we then need to get eight glimmering flowers. Are there any mystical flowers that we have a large number of? Not really. We've got five mystical orange flowers, and we can turn those into glimmering mystical orange flowers by crafting them with two glowstone, like this. And then we can take those and craft them with the aforementioned pasture seeds and the dirt and that's going to get us a floating orange flower this on its own not particularly useful however we can then of course go ahead and craft the floating orange flower with our entropinium and that's going to make floating entropiniums which are the exact same flower but you can place them down really wherever you like you no longer have to place them down on the ground which is very useful so let's go ahead and pick both those up thankfully you don't lose them when you break them and we can do the exact same thing over here just with different uh, floating flowers. So let's say we wanted to get, uh, what do we have here? Mystical flower. Let's do two black ones, maybe. Again, with glowstone, we could do something like this. And then we need one more. I don't want to use all of my mystical flowers here. I want to have at least some left. The only reason I did orange is because we have some orange left there. Uh, let's also do, I guess, like a magenta as well. And then we'll do this. We'll do this. And then we should be able, from there, to craft up one, to three more floating flowers, and we can craft up our remaining entropiniums into floating entropiniums. Nice. And so essentially what we're gonna have to do here is get another mana pool. And for now, I'm gonna take our pre-existing mana spreaders, but we'll make more to replace the ones that are over here. But for now, if I just go ahead and steal this mana spreader, we can see this in action. We're also going to, of course, need some kind of TNT. Thankfully, that's gonna be fairly easy for us. And we need some way of activating that TNT. Let's go with a lever for the time being. So. As the book would suggest, over here, if we go ahead and throw down our mana pool, like so, and we throw down our mana spreader, like we did before, this should by default be connected. It is, again, if you put it facing the mana pool. From there, we can go ahead and throw down an entropinium, really wherever we want, so long as it's within the range of the mana spreader, and then shift right click here, shift right click here, that connects this entropinium to this mana spreader, just like we did before. Now, if we do this and this, it looks a little scary, but, if all is working well, nothing happens because all of that mana got taken into the floating entropinium and now is being sent via this mana spreader over into the mana pool. So what we want to do is we want to get 
some kind of block placer. Thankfully, we can do that using the modular routers and the placer module, I don't think is too difficult to make. In fact, I think we used this previously for our latex. We're gonna use that to place down TNT over here. We're then going to kind of resurrect. Let me do, I guess, this and this. Oh, actually, this already has all the stuff in it. Fair enough. I'll take these out and put them back in the system for now. We'll leave it with just the block placer. But uh, what we're going to do is over here, we are going to go ahead and teach our system how to make TNT encode. The reason for that is that we can get both a creeper bee and a sand bee to automate the production of both sand and gunpowder to make us unlimited TNT. We can then use an exporter to export that TNT over and around to the modular router. That's gonna give the modular router hopefully an infinite amount of TNT to continually place down over and over and over again. And with this lever here, all of that TNT is gonna get blown up instantly. We can then put down all of our entropiniums, all of our floating entropiniums around that TNT. Let's say we do one, two, three, four, and then maybe five, six, seven, and we'll take the eighth one as well. I'm gonna move you up just for symmetry's sake. Let's say I put this down right about here. And at this point, our big problem is going to be the mana spreader. Because you'll see it took a couple of seconds for the mana to get taken out of that entropinium and sent through the mana spreader into the mana pool. And that's our big limiting factor because in order to maximize the amount of mana that we can produce, we want to maximize the amount of TNT that we kind of burn through. If I go ahead and take like a stack of TNT here and we go back over here, we can place down eight pieces of TNT all at once because each and every one of these entropiniums should go ahead and stop each and every one of those pieces of TNT from being blown up. So if I do one, I can't really place down more than one, but if I put like seven more in here, I think like this, uh, those should get placed down if we set this to place it at the front. There we go. And that's just gonna keep placing those down and they're gonna blow up. Thankfully the block placer can place them down kind of faster than I can, but all of these are gonna get consumed and all of them are going to produce mana. Now, right now, all of that mana is going through this one mana spreader. And as you can see, it's not really keeping up. This is full, it's not losing mana because this spreader cannot move that mana fast enough out of these entropiniums, which is limiting therefore how much mana we can make. The kind of first solution to that would be to make just eight mana spreaders because you can connect one mana spreader to each and every one of these entropiniums and have all those mana spreaders shoot their mana at the mana pool. On top of that, we can also look at using lenses on our mana spreader to increase the efficiency and the potency of the mana spreaders themselves. Again, if we go back to the uh, Lexica Britannia here and we type in uh, lens over in the entry index, it should show us the mana lens section of the book. A mana spreader can be upgraded with mana lenses. The most basic mana lens does absolutely nothing. That is to be expected, but there are velocity lenses which will dramatically increase the speed at which the mana burst travels, but at the expense of initial capacity and faster mana loss, so the mana will deplete more over time. That shouldn't be a problem for us because we're gonna keep our distances very short. Then there's the potency lens, which will double the amount of mana a mana burst can carry. However, the beam travels slower. Again, that slowness shouldn't really matter too much because we're not going over a long distance. But uh, the even better thing is that you can actually combine these lenses. So uh, the idea here is that to make a mana lens, we just need mana steel and glass. And so real quick, let me grab maybe like a stack of iron and let's do something like this. Thankfully, it doesn't require too much mana to make this. Good stuff. And then back over here, we didn't quite get a stack, but that's fine. 40 should be okay for us. Back over here, we'll make, let's say two mana lenses like this. Now, if we wanted to make the velocity lens, we would craft our mana lens with a rune of air, which we don't have, but we can make. And then the potency lens is a mana lens with a rune of fire, which again, unfortunately we don't have, but we can make. So let me get rid of the uh, runes that we do have. And then let's have a look at getting the items required. So nether wart, uh, nether brick, which I have on me currently, and gunpowder. Do we have any more mana powder and mana steel? We do indeed, fantastic. And then as for the rune of air, that just requires string, feathers, and carpet. Do we have any feathers? We do, we've got loads of feathers, perfect. String, we have in abundance, and then carpet, we can of course make from wool. So we can do something like this, and that's going to allow us to make a couple of the runes of air and runes of fire. We just need to move this mana spreader because we've stolen the pre-existing mana spreader that would actually allow us to use the runic altar. All right, and once we've got another set of the runes of fire and our first set 
of errors back over here. Let's see if we can't get a couple of mana lenses, and then if we can't upgrade those mana lenses with their rune. So that gets us a velocity rune with the air rune, and this gets us a potency lens with the, uh, the fire rune. So each of these individually have their effects. The velocity lens allows the uh, mana to move faster, but with less capacity. The potency lens allows it to move more mana, but slower. Thankfully, one really nifty thing you can do here is you can actually combine these runes using a slime ball to make a composite mana lens with both potency and velocity. And I can kind of show this off over here because if we uh, go ahead and try and make, let's say another fire rune here, right? So let's put in all the items required to make the rune of fire like this and like this. You'll see the mana starts to come in. You'll see that kind of... Uh, clock face on the right there slowly filling up but if we do this that's going to start to move the mana much faster and that's going to start to fill that rune up on the right hand side there much quicker than it was previously and so i think at least initially what we can try do here is we can try maybe make eight more mana spreaders one for every single one of our entropiniums and we can also see about trying to get eight more composite mana lenses to allow us to move all of that mana kind of as fast as the basic mana lens can into the mana pool. Now there are faster mana spreaders, but the higher tier mana spreaders like the elven mana spreader require quite a bit of work in terms of getting an elven portal open. And so I'm gonna try with the regular spreaders and if that's not enough, then we can potentially look at upgrading the spreaders. But I think that uh, we should be able to set up a fairly good mana generation system just using these, uh, these basic lenses. Okay, so not too long later, we now have our eight mana spreaders. We no longer need this one. And I've also got some more living rock here as well, because one other thing that we can do is we can invest in a mana splitter. The mana splitter here is going to allow us to shoot our mana at the mana splitter, and then it's going to take all of the mana and divide it up amongst up to four mana pools, which essentially is just going to give us more space for all of our mana, because we need a lot of it. So back over here, if we do something like this, we can then put down these four mana pools. And now what we want to do is we want to have our mana spreaders shoot at the mana splitter. Now, one thing I might actually do here, we are gonna lose some mana doing it, but that's fine. There's not too much in there. I might move this forward a little bit, potentially put it here, just to shorten the pathway and therefore increase the throughput of some of these closer mana spreaders. So if we do this, 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 and you guessed it, this, all of those are now pointing at the mana splitter. And so now if we do the same kind of eight TNT that we did previously, all eight of those should get absorbed because we have all of our entropiniums down and they're all empty as far as I'm aware, or they're not all empty. That's, oh no, maybe they are empty. I think they're all empty. I'm fairly certain they're all empty. I think the reason why it looked like one wasn't empty is that it already taken some TNT. That's fine, cool. So that is working. Of course, Isaac, you fool, you do have to connect these entropiniums to the mana spreaders. Otherwise, nothing is gonna work. So let's quickly do that. You want to go, uh, whoops, you. Make sure you're in bind mode. You go here, you go here. If you shift right click by accident, you'll change it into function mode. Just shift right click again to get to bind mode. There we go. So now these are all moving. Uh, and of course, one thing I've not even done as well is I've not put my lenses on, which is uh, a mistake. Back over here, we do of course have all of those lenses let's take all of those again they do not stack but that is completely fine back over here let's get all of these onto all of these spreaders and hopefully make them all a fair bit faster and then we can try kind of this whole process again and see how fast we uh, we can burn through these and then we kind of now have to figure out how often we want to place the tnt down because i think what we're going to do is we're going to end up using a, a timer to tell the modular router when to put the tnt down Real quick, just to be safe, let's check over here. These are indeed all empty. And so again, if we put eight in here, they're all gonna get placed down and they're all gonna start sending their mana pretty quickly over into that center spreader. And you'll see it's going down much, much faster now. Cool. So as I mentioned, I think my plan now is to go ahead and grab one of the timers that we used earlier in the pack. And if we place this down on the back of the modular router, we should then, I believe, whoops, be able to tell the modular router when to put the TNT down. Now, by default, you'll notice that it puts down the TNT kind of nonstop. I believe we can change that by changing the redstone mode here. Pulse is the correct option, there we go. If we go ahead, let's say we set this to 80 ticks, that's four seconds. I think there we could safely put the full 39 or full stack of TNT in. I think this is too slow. 
right? I think this is going to be completely fine. This entropy in here got all that TNT, and you'll see that even before the second one's blown up, that first one is not quite done, but it's almost done. And by the time the third one's down, that one here is done. And so now this one will be the next one that gets taken over. So we can definitely bring this down. Let's try... I'm going to start by adding a zero because I don't want to bring it down to like eight ticks. That would be bad. Let's go with... Let's go back down to 50 ticks because I think 50 ticks might work. We do have to be somewhat cautious here. And of course, we still don't have... And you're not connected up, eh? Uh, let me do this and this. Uh, we do have to be cautious here. Uh, 50, not 500, ideally. Because we don't want things to blow up. That would be quite bad. Now, the only trouble that we're eventually going to run into with this setup is that eventually all of these mana pools will completely fill and once all of these mana pools have completely filled then the mana will then backlog in the mana spreader it will then backlog in the floating entropinium and eventually the tnt will actually explode and cause tremendous damage which is not ideal and so what i think we might do is we might set up uh, some kind of comparator system because the mana pools themselves do emit a redstone signal equal to the level of fullness that they're currently at. So uh, do we have a comparator? We do, perfect. Uh, let's grab some redstone as well. What I think we might end up doing is throwing down a comparator onto one of these pools. They should kind of fill up equally, although it looks like for whatever reason, this one at the bank is filling up last. I think that's because these mana spreaders, I think these, they look like they're trying to send mana here, but I think because they're so low down, I think they're actually pumping into this pool, which I think is why that pool is getting more mana i think a similar thing might be going on with like this mana spreader hitting this mana pool first either way we'll pick maybe the emptiest mana pool and if we get a comparator reading from that we can then potentially use that to not use this lever if that makes sense i think what we'll do is we'll look to invert this signal so that when this signal gets too high basically when this gets too full it turns off the blowing up of the tnt and therefore the modular which will stop placing down new tnt uh, and the whole thing will stop Okay, so I've gone ahead and moved the mana spreaders and the floating entropiniums up by one block so that now they all do shoot at the center mana splitter. And so now the mana pools should fill up somewhat evenly. And then here we've got our comparator. We have redstone running around, and then we have that going into a block of stone. This can be any block with a redstone torch on the other side. The idea here is that this redstone torch being in the block next to the TNT will cause the TNT to explode, which is good. And then... Uh, the idea with this is that right now this is at power one, and so obviously everything is fine, but eventually when the power on this gets high enough, it's going to go ahead and turn off this torch. Essentially, when this redstone here gets to a power of one, it's going to turn off this redstone torch, and then any TNT that is placed down by the modular router should just sit there. It shouldn't actually blow up. Perfect, at least until the mana in the pool drops low enough to where there's no longer a high enough redstone signal, at which point the explosions will continue and all of the mana will continue to be produced. That is the idea. So now the final piece of this puzzle really is just going to be getting that exporter onto the bottom of this modular router and then using a crafting card to tell our applied energistics to system to automatically craft the TNT and send it over to that export card the crafting card here is not too difficult it requires one basic card with a crafting table easy enough and again the export bus just like we made earlier in the episode should be fairly straightforward i do recall as being out of formation calls so we'll make some more of those and then over here all we should have to do and i'm glad to see this is still working there was a part of me that thought i might come back to a fully destroyed base but uh, all that we should have to do here is throw down our exporter like this tell it to export tnt and then if we put the crafting card in now as soon as we connect this up Whenever we don't have TNT, the system is going to request that TNT be made using our molecular assembler, and then it's going to send that TNT over to the buffer of this modular router. Okay, so I've gone ahead and connected this up. So we've got our line running all the way over to here. This is now good to go. And we've got our TNT pattern, which for whatever reason was just inside of the system. And so right now there's no TNT in the system and there's no TNT in that modular router. I think as soon as we throw this tnt into one of these crafters maybe this one here it should go ahead and because we got the crafting card in look at that instantly go ahead and request tnt be made and then that tnt gets placed down and the hope for us is just that the tnt is being crafted and exported faster than it's being used and that looks to be the case you'll see we've got six seven eight seven eight and nine so it is being made faster again i do think there's still room for tweaking this i think we could still if we wanted to kind of eke out 
even more from this if we wanted to. I think we could try and tweak the number down on the timer to try and squeeze a bit more power out of this whole setup. But I think for the most part, this is fine. Yes. The whole thing has me so worried. <laughs> it's potentially a needlessly risky setup, but it looks like we're not even kind of fully saturating all eight of these fireworks. There are two up here that seem to be permanently offline because it seems to have a, a dedicated order that goes in. So I think there is even more potential here for us to eke out some more mana to make this uh, even better. But what we now need to do is we now need to start using this mana to make Terror Steel. To do that, we need to get the terrestrial agglomeration plate and we need to set up this little multi-block structure. So bank over here, I'm gonna leave that over there for now where it's fairly safe, I think. And bank over here, the terrestrial agglomeration plate is made using three blocks of lapis, one block of mana steel, which thankfully we do have the mana steel to make, and then one of each of the basic runes. So we need one rune of water, one rune of earth, one rune of fire, one rune of air, and one rune of mana. And it looks like we are just missing the Rune of Fire, the Rune of Air, and the Rune of Mana. Thankfully, the Rune of Mana is uh, very straightforward. And so, uh, once again, let's make sure we have all the items to make this. We've got the Gunpowder, we've got the Nether Brick, and we just need the Nether Wart. This is like the billionth uh, Fire Runes we've made today, but that's fine. Do we have any more Mana Steel? We do. We also have more Mana Powder. Fantastic. Uh, the Rune of Air was Carpet. It was Feather. We already have the Carpet and it was string, all of which we have. And then I think that's basically everything that we need. So let me quickly go and whip up those runes. Oh, of course, the rune of mana here, by the way, is just a bunch of mana steel with one mana pearl, which again, fairly straightforward. We've got 4,096 ender pearls. We just need to take one of those and drop that into our mana pool, like so. And then the rest is just mana steel. Again, over here, we go one, two, three, four, five, along with this guy, Six, and boom. All right, and a bit more rune making later, we now have everything for the terrestrial agglomeration plate. And as far as this setup is concerned, we just need five living rock. Annoyingly, we have exactly four, and we also need four lapis blocks. Thankfully, we have got 8,000, perfect. Bank over here though, we were making more living rock, and this is one of those situations where the building gadget does come in quite useful, especially if you're doing multiple rounds of crafting with the pure daisy because you can take something like stone or wood and just go ahead and set your exchanging gadget to replace whatever's down with either stone or wood and it makes it a lot easier to uh, to replace what's there which is perfect so back over here we should now have everything that we need in order to get down this terrestrial agglomeration plate setup it is quite simply a three by three area nine blocks in total we then have kind of a cross pattern of living rock like this. We are one, two, three, four with living rock in the center. And then Lapis Balule goes around like this, with this, like this, and the terrestrial agglomeration plate goes in the center. Now this is basically done. All we need to do is get mana over to it. Unfortunately, unlike basically everything else in Batania, you can't actually send mana to it using a mana spreader. In order for this to work, we need a spark. Thankfully, the sparks are super easy to make. It is two of any color petals with two blaze powder and a gold nugget. We have a ton of mystical brown flowers and uh, we need one spark per mana pool. So I'm gonna go ahead and make five of these here. And essentially all we have to do is go ahead and right click one of these onto the terrestrial agglomeration plate. That's gonna place it directly above it. You can walk through this. And then we do the same thing on each of our four mana pools. And essentially that makes all of the mana inside of the mana pools available to the terrestrial agglomeration plate. And so right now we do have collectively more than half a mana pool's worth of mana. And so in theory, we do now have everything we need in order to make our first Terra Steel. To make a Terra Steel, we need three things. Those three things are a mana pearl, a mana diamond, and a mana steel. Right now we've got the mana steel. We can very quickly get a mana pearl and a mana diamond, like so. And then if we go and we just drop or right click all three of these onto the terrestrial agglomeration plate, one, two, and three, it will begin crafting that into Terra Steel. And you'll see all these particle effects here. That's all of the mana going from our mana pools. You'll see these are going down quite quickly and it's gonna transform all of that mana into Terra Steel. Look at that, nice. And so we just need to do that 
17 more times. Because once we've done it 17 more times, we will have enough Terra Steel to make the Terra Steel Bee Nectar Block. We can then, of course, get our Terra Steel Bee Spawn Egg using the Mana Steel Bee and the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate. And as soon as we have the Terra Steel Bee, we can, of course, then get infinite Terra Steel by using the Terra Steel Honeycombs inside of our multi-block centrifuge. And so, yeah, we just need to do what we just did 17 more times, and our limiting factor is definitely going to be mana production. Okay, so I've made four Terra Steel. Of course, we still need to get the uh, the remaining 14, when I have made all of the uh, mana diamonds, mana pearls, and mana steel in order to do that, but now it's just a case of getting enough mana, because you'll see we don't have quite half a mana pool's worth of mana here, but the mana is still coming in. I've tweaked this down ever so slightly. We're at 28 ticks currently. Uh, we're kind of testing 28 ticks. 30 ticks was fine. I think 28 ticks is also going to be fine. But essentially, I'm going to leave this here while the mana pools here accumulate with mana. It has been brought to my attention by the Twitch chat that we do have to build the Elven Gateway Portal anyway because there is an Elementium Singularity right here that is used as part of the Ultimate Singularity recipe. And so we do have to get a ton of Elementium. We have to get an Elementium B. We'll add that to the list. Uh, this is acquired via the Spawn Egg using a Mana B and an Elven Gateway Core. And the Elven Gateway Core is what's going to allow us to actually build the portal. And if we can get the portal, that's also going to allow us to upgrade our Mana Spreaders, which would then allow us to decrease the time even further on the TNT placements, thus increasing our mana production even further. So real quick, the Elven Gateway Core here is just mm. three Terra Steel Nuggets and six Living Wood. We might, and by might, I mean we definitely will, need to get some more Living Wood. That is not a problem. We've got a bunch of Oak, or should I say we have the ability to get a, a bunch of Oak using the Wood Honeycomb here. And again, if we uh, quickly do one of these and using our exchanging gadget, one of these, we can then just go ahead and replace the living rock over here, like this and like this, with wood, which will then turn into living wood. And the idea, if we uh, once again look inside of the Lexica Britannia here, and we type in Elven, is we're going to make the portal to the Alphine. This is made like this. We need one Elven gateway caught in the middle. We then need three glimmering living wood, this stuff right here. This is just living wood with glowstone, easy enough. And then the rest of this is just living wood. So we need two, four, six, eight more living wood on top of that. And then in order for this to actually work, there is also a structure that goes around it. We need the mana pools and mana pylons. Let me, uh, I thought it would show me it here, but it doesn't. Let me go in here. We need to get two of these mana pylons. Thankfully, fairly straightforward. They just require a mana diamond, two mana steel, and two gold. We'll take one and two of those we also need to get two more mana pools thankfully i did accidentally make one too many earlier and so we'll take that one along with a fresh one and that should basically be everything we need it's now just a case of making sure we have enough living wood in fact i didn't realize i had some in my inventory to the point if we make three glimmering living wood here i think we're basically good to go Chat is right, actually. I do need these Natura pylons, not the mana pylons. The Natura pylons, thankfully, are made using the mana pylons mm. with three Terra Steel Nuggets and an Eye of Endo. And so boom and boom. Thankfully, all of the recipes here just require one Terra Steel because it's three Nuggets for the Gateway Core, three Nuggets for each Natura pylon, and that's uh, nine Nuggets in total, which is equivalent to one ingot's worth. And so we'll put this down over here. Essentially, we're going to put the Gateway Core in the center. We then put the living wood either side, like this. And you could fill in the corners with living wood if you wanted to, but they don't need to be filled in. All we need to do is make sure that we have something like this, something like this with the glimmering in the middle. And then the final piece of the puzzle up at the top here is to do the exact same thing again. It doesn't look like we're missing just the one living wood. However, that living wood is now available over here. And so if we quickly go ahead, do something like this, that's going to go ahead and give us the remaining living wood, which we can then place down right about here. And then just for the sake of appearances, I will go ahead and get rid of these uh, horrible oak planks that we've got down. And essentially from here, we need to put down our two mana pools. These can go anywhere within a, a few blocks of the portal. They don't specifically have to go right here, but they need to be nearby. And then you simply place the nature of pylons on top of the mana pools like this and like this. And then finally, you have to get a little bit of mana into each mana pool. It doesn't require a staggering amount of mana, but we do need a little bit in there. The easiest way for us to move mana now is going to be using a mana tablet. The mana tablet is pretty nifty and also fairly straightforward. Uh, you can make it with either a mana diamond or a mana pearl and then eight living rock. And essentially what we can do here is we can throw this mana tablet into a mana pool. And if we use our wand of the forest, you'll see that by default, 
it is set to pull mana out of a mana tablet into a mana pool. If we shift right click with the Wand of the Forest, it will change it to be set to pull out of the mana pool into the mana tablet. At which point, if we drop the mana tablet in, it's gonna go ahead and start pulling mana out of that mana pool into the mana tablet, which is perfect. I wanna make sure that this mana pool kinda isn't the one we pull from every single time. I'm gonna try and make it a little even. Of course, I do wanna make sure all of these are actually set to, uh, to pull into the mana pool actually, otherwise uh, we'll have happen what I just did there where I just put mana into that mana pool, which is not what I meant to do. Uh, real quick, we can also do uh, one of these whilst we're over here and quickly uh, drop one of each item onto our terrestrial agglomeration plate. And then over here, we wanna make sure these are set to uh, pull mana from the tablet into the pool, just like that. And we, again, really only need a small amount of mana in each mana pool. In fact, I think that's probably enough. And so let me quickly get a little bit more mana into this mana pool. And once we have enough, we just right click on the Elven Gateway call with our Wand of the Forest, and we should be good to go. We did make a bit of a tweak here, by the way. I made the redstone cable here longer because before uh, this was gonna turn the TNT off before the mana pools were full. Now it's still gonna turn off before they get super full, but um, essentially when this is full, it will emit a redstone signal that is 15 and you lose one redstone signal for every redstone that you have. And so if you put it exactly 15 blocks away, it would wait until it was full. I'd recommend setting it to at least 14 blocks away so that you can give yourself a little bit of wiggle room and make sure that you never end up in a situation where the TNT explodes. Either way, back over here, let's drop that in. That's gonna start pulling even more mana out. And again, if we just go ahead and right click on that, it should begin working. And like I said, I think that's already enough. It's not enough. Let me get a little bit more into each one of these here. And let's try that again. There we go, nice. Once all the particle effects come in, it is good to go. And so now what we can do, if we wanted to upgrade our mana spreaders to the elven mana spreaders, we would need elementium ingots, Dreamwood and Petals. The Elementium is made by throwing Mana Steel, two Mana Steel equals one Elementium, uh, into the portal. So if I do one and two, we get one Elementium back. And it does use a little bit of mana out of these pools every time you do that. Uh, you can also throw the book in here, that is true. That's gonna give you an upgraded version of the book with even more in it. And then the Dreamwood is just Living Wood. So we take our Living Wood, we throw that through, like so. And we get Dreamwood back, nice. And so real quick, let me go get some more living wood, which we should have over there, we do indeed. And let me go get some more mana steel as well. And I am gonna see if we can't make eight of these elven mana spreaders because these are the exact same as regular mana spreaders. We can still put the exact same lenses on them. Uh, you can shift right click to take these lenses off by the way, but they're just faster. They are like the old mana spreaders, but they can move even more mana, which is going to allow us to reduce the timer here, put down even more TNT and produce mana even faster. Okay, so not so long later, and we are basically good to go. I actually did one more Dreamwood here. That should be everything for our final Elven Spreader. Over here, we're gonna go ahead and throw that down into the last slot. Thankfully, whenever you uh, break and replace these spreaders, so long as you don't break and replace, whoops, so long as you don't break and replace the flower, the flower will stay linked to the space where the old spreader was. You'll see this is automatically linked to this. This is still linked to this. It's all good. You'd have to relink it. All you have to do, place the lens back on and then shift right click and shift right click with the wand. And now if we go ahead and uh, turn this off again, uh, TNT is instantly going to get placed down, but we should see that the mana leaves the entropiniums even faster than it did previously to the point where I think we can quite safely lower the timer speed here once again, because I think we're going to have two entropiniums here again that are just not even touched because all of the other entropiniums are taking care of the mana in such a, a fast time. You'll see that basically all of these are empty. And so we definitely have some wiggle room to make this lower. I'll go ahead and change it to 20 ticks maybe here. Although I think we could potentially go even lower. I think 15 would be fine. Uh, apparently when you change this, by the way, I changed it to 208 and then down to 20. And so when you do that, it first does the 208 and then it'll go back to 20. So 208 is gonna take 10 seconds. After that, they'll go back like this to going down once a second. So uh, just be patient, especially if you put a large number in. Uh, you can break and replace it if you put a really big number in. But, uh, but yeah, and so now we should hopefully be getting mana even faster. I did have to use basically all of my mana steel on making the Elementium. However, we do have a ton of iron and so we can get even more here to get uh, all of the required Terra steel. And yeah, now it's just a case of continuing to make that terra steel but thankfully we should be able to make it a fair bit faster just due to the fact that the mana should now be coming in quicker and again there's just a little bit of tweaking left to do i guess now on trying to get this number to the right place the easier way to do this potentially by the way is just to turn this off and then once it's stopped then change the number because that way if you do set it to zero it doesn't really matter 
Let me try 14. I think 14 should be fine. And let's keep doing this over here. We'll go you, you, and you. So I've gone all the way down to eight ticks here. So we're placing down more than two TNT per second and it's holding up just fine, which is uh, just goes to show the power of these. You'll see these top three and not even being used. Like in an ideal world, we want all of them to be on basically all the time. And so there's probably still more we could eke out. We might be able to go down to five. One thing we are going to enter, the problem we're going to enter, is that we're not able to make the TNT fast enough here. Thankfully, I think there are a few things we can do, and they all uh, involve acceleration cards. I really do need to make more acceleration cards instead of stealing them from over here, but I believe currently there's no acceleration cards in the crafter over here that's making the TNT. That's this one. And so we can do, oh, there are, we can put some more in like this. And then on top of that, I believe we can also put a couple of acceleration cards over into the exporter as well to make the exporter faster. It's going to kind of check more often to uh, to see if it needs the TNT, which I think would be sensible. Uh, thankfully, more of these cards are fairly straightforward to make. Boom and boom. 12 should be more than enough for us to kind of refill our inscribers. Let's make sure these all have acceleration cards in them. And then back over here, we'll also put acceleration cards into this Xbox bus as well, which should hopefully increase the speed at which we get the TNT to where I'm hopeful that we might get more. Never mind, we are completely out of sand. We just don't have any. We've burned through all of the, I think, 2,000 sand that we had at the start of the episode. And right now, our only source of sand is uh, over here. And you'll see the reason it stopped is because uh, a fool didn't lock these drawers earlier because I didn't uh, expect that I would need to lock the drawers. But... The, uh, the whole setup here is not fast enough to keep up with the production, and so we are definitely going to want to look at getting ourselves a, a sand bee to allow us to uh, to start producing sand combs and, and, of course, using that sand to make the terror steel. Unfortunately, this episode is already uh, extraordinarily long. Uh, we do have what it takes here to make, like, one more terror steel ingot, which is almost enough to get us to our first block. But, of course, we need two blocks if we're going to get that terror steel bee. Uh, this is working. And so next time, chat, we'll come back and we'll get some more bee work done. We should, hopefully, once we get uh, sand and potentially the creeper bee as well. Right now, we're getting gunpowder from our mob farm, which, again, is not coming in fast enough. We've gone down from, I think, 16,000 gunpowder at the start of the episode to 12,000 now. So we are actively losing gunpowder as well. But uh, next time, we'll come back. We'll get the uh, sand bee. We'll probably look at upgrading uh, some of our apiaries here so we can potentially get sand and gunpowder even faster with higher tier apiaries. If we do that, we, of course, need to look at getting more elite centrifuges as well to process all of those blocks of comb that we're going to get even faster. We're going to have to do that anyway for all of the bees required to get all of the ultimate singularities and ultimate ingots that we're going to need. We'll get those terrestrial bees. We'll get the mana steel bees. We'll get the draconian bees. We'll get the awakened draconian bees uh, if we can set up the, uh, the process required for that awakened draconian, which I think we should be able to do. And then, yeah, from there, it's just a case of uh, getting all of the bees and all of the resources for the ultimate singularities and the ultimate ingots. And then we can look at making some creative items. But, of course, that is a problem for future Isaac. For now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Sky Bees 2 there.